Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the newly released MSI MAG X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. So this is one of the new motherboards featuring the new X870 chipset. So these are natively compatible with AMD's new Ryzen 9000 series desktop CPUs. So shout out to RK Benchmarker for providing the Tomahawk for me to do content on here for the channel. Otherwise, this content would not be possible without this hardware. So much appreciated, as always. So not only did RK provide this, RK is also providing this G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB memory kit that is certified for 8400. So this is a 48 gigabyte kit, so 2 times 24. We'll be taking a look at how this runs on these motherboards as well. See if we can clock up to 8400 on these new X870 boards. So to start off here, just to kind of look at how the box looks, you can see the MSI MAG branding on the back. You get a full picture of the motherboard as well as the various CPUs that it supports, as well as all the USB ports and storage. So this is probably one of the nicest, if not the best overall motherboard for the X870. Now, when I say X870, I'm talking about X870, not X870E, because X870E is a higher-end dual chipset solution, so that is a different product segment. But among the X870 boards, this one is probably one of the best ones, so you definitely want this one to be on the short list. So let's dive into it here. It opens up like this. We have a, there's like a thing here on the front that actually has stuff inside. So when we open this, it includes the Wi-Fi 7 antenna. So you get a Wi-Fi 7 antenna. I think that's the only thing that's in this little box here. So yeah, that's what's in there. So you get that. And then the motherboard itself is here. So this is the main attraction. So we've got the Tomahawk board. In here, we have some SATA cable stickers that you can use as well as MSI's Lucky the Dragon kind of mascot that they've been using for a while as well as their Dragon Shield logo that they've had for a number of years now. A sweepstake thing and then a quick installation guide and European Union regulatory notices. So interesting. So that's there. A quick installation guide. There's a QR code you can scan. That'll probably take you to the manual online. And then we have this, what looks like a extender cable for the front panel header, I believe, that they're using. And then we have two SATA cables for hard drives or SSDs that are SATA-based. And then we have a... This looks like this is used for the heat sinks, if there's a screw on them. I think that's what this is for. And then a USB drive for the chipset drivers and the Wi-Fi drivers, etc. Extra little toolless knobs for the M.2s. So you get three of them, it looks like. There's three in here. And then there is a... An, it's an extra screw for something. Lastly, there's this... This proprietary cable that MSI is using on their new motherboards plugs into the board and then it basically splits out a four pin fan header as well as dual RGB, the ARGB. So that's what that's for. So that's what's in the box. So overall pretty standard stuff in there. So nice black finish. You can see it has the memory slot latches on both the top and the bottom. They have a nice click to them, as well as this new quick disconnect for the GPU. So it is a switch actuated. So when you press on it, it's a nice solid click on there. So this indicates that it is unlocked. There's a little symbol in there indicating that the graphics card is not secure. So you need to press this and it will then lock it. It's spring loaded. So this is actually a pretty nice implementation. I actually really like this implementation. You can see how it moves over there. So that is actually a really nice implementation. It's gotten to the point now where all of these motherboard manufacturers offer a GPU quick disconnect button or some sort of option like this or a latch. Being a X870 board, 
at this price point, it is nice to see that it includes a postcode. This was something that was severely lacking on a lot of last generation motherboards in this price category. So it is nice to see that on a $300 board, as well as the traditional debug lights for DRAM, VGA, etc. So you got two system fan headers here, the third one up there, and then the pump header and the CPU fan header. Top of the board, we have the dual 8-pin EPS connectors, a really thick heat sink for the VRM. So all of these AMD boards have very good VRM because the VRM, the Ryzen CPUs don't pull that much power. Typically, any of these motherboards in this price category are more than able to handle a flagship 9950X, for example, or any of the upcoming X3D 9000 series CPUs. So moving along to the side here, you have the 24 pin right under the postcode. I like the position of this postcode because if you have your computer on the floor, for example, and if the top of the case, you can see through the venting or you can see from the side panel, you can see this from the side without having to like bend over and look under at the computer. Whereas if it was higher up, it would be harder to see. You'd basically have to like bend over to see it. So I like the placement on the postcode debugs. That's very nice. It's the proprietary connector for the breakout to a fan header and RGB. And then we have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. So this is a 20 gigabit USB C that goes to the front panel of the case, provided the case supports 20 gig, otherwise it'll run at 10 gig. It does provide 27 watts for faster charging or more power to the USB device. Four SATA ports here, two USB 3.0 traditional plugs. And then moving along to the bottom, we have the JFP1 connector for the power reset buttons and hard drive LED. They do have the JFP2, which is for the speaker. This is something that ASUS has started to remove from their motherboard, so it is nice to see MSI still maintains this as a standard feature on their boards. You get some ARGB connectors, more system fan headers, two more USB 2.0 headers for the case. For example, if you have an older case, you might be able to use these. And then an 8-pin PCIe plug which will help load balance the power delivery to the PCI expansion slots. RGB, RGB, and then we have an onboard audio plug for the front panel audio. The chipset is underneath this heat, heat sink, so all they gotta do, press this inward, and then it goes up and then it comes out. This is for the top Gen 5 SSD, so it supports full Gen 5 bandwidth. It is dedicated for lanes directly to the CPU, so this would be the optimal boot drive. Then you have 16 Gen 5 lanes for the graphics card. These lanes are never shared. So one of the nicest things with the Tomahawk is if you're someone who wants to avoid lane sharing between your graphics card and M.2 drives, this motherboard does not share any lanes between the graphics card and the storage. So you can plug in all four M.2 drives and your graphics card will still be running at 16 lanes. So that is one of the nicest things that I've found about this Tomahawk board from MSI. So you got double-sided heat spreaders on both the top heat sink as well as the motherboard. And then here, this one looks like they're going to have four screws, but then this bottom one also has the removable. You can see it's spring-loaded like that. That's how it clicks in. So you would just line these teeth up with these two knobs and then you would just press it back into place. And so it's very easy to do. So I really like MSI's toolless approach. So on some of their higher end boards, like the Carbon, it's 100% toolless. The Tomahawk does have four screws here that we will have to remove in order to look at the remaining M.2s. But it is nice to see a lot of these newer boards featuring what I consider quality of life improvements on their designs so under the screws and then right there you got two more heat spreaders for more ssd storage and here they have a latch mechanism that you would just put into place to fasten the drives so it looks like only the top slot has a bottom 
uh, heat spreader for the board. The other three do not have that. But at this price category, with no GPU lane sharing, I think that is a, a good compromise. So for the lane allocation here, the top slot is always Gen 5 16. It is never shared with any of the drives. The second slot here, this one is also a Gen 5 capable M.2 slot. However, this one shares bandwidth with the ASM 4242, which is actually covered up underneath this heatsink. But that controller is what provides the dual USB 4, which as you can see here, it's labeled 40 gigabit bandwidth per port. So the controller that drives these two does share bandwidth with the second Gen 5 SSD. As far as I know, MSI is the only vendor that is providing that sort of solution to avoid taking lanes from the graphics card. So I guess MSI thought that it's better to share bandwidth between the USB 4 controller and offer a second Gen 5 SSD slot without impacting the graphics card's lanes. So I think that is actually a better solution, but only time will tell versus taking lanes from the graphics card. Because I know a lot of you out there that watch my motherboard videos, you guys are always asking what motherboard doesn't take lanes from the graphics card or doesn't share lanes with the graphics card. Well, this is one of them. And it still provides two Gen 5 SSDs. I'm pretty certain that the upcoming X870E godlike does the exact same thing because as far as I know that one does not share lanes with the GPU as well. So moving on we have a third M.2. This one is Gen 4 but this one will run at X2 so it's half bandwidth because it it takes two lanes from the bottom slot to provide the bandwidth. So this normally if you're not using this third M.2 the bottom slot will run at X4, so you could run like a 4K capture card in this bottom slot, and it'll work fine. Otherwise, if you use this third M.2 slot, this will run at X2, which means if you plug a 10 gigabit LAN network card in here, that's perfect for this bottom slot if you want to add 10 gig, because 10 gig only needs two lanes of Gen 3, and this is a four lane or two lane, depending on if this is active, Gen 4. And then we have the second slot is an X1 Gen 3, which is always the case. And the bottom one down here is a Gen 4 four-lane SSD slot that does not share any lanes. On the back, it does have a BIOS flash button and a clear CMOS button. That's very good to see on a $300 price point board to offer. A lot of them, you don't see the clear CMOS. HDMI, the USB 4, like I mentioned earlier, both of these provide DisplayPort Alt Mode out, so you can drive... A monitor off of this or this or the HDMI so you can drive you can drive three monitors up to five monitors off of all three of these ports provided you have USB-C to display port monitors then we have a 10 gigabit USB that also is the one that you would use if you're gonna do BIOS flashback for example Then we have three 5 gig USBs four USB 2.0 and another 10 gig then you get an additional 10 gig USB-C and a 5 gig LAN and Wi-Fi 7 and optical audio. So the back of the board does not have a backplate. However, it does have what MSI is calling a case standoff keep out zone to kind of protect if somebody is trying to install this in a case and they're not lining it up correctly and they're pressing down on it. Oftentimes the motherboard standoffs could cut in depending on how much pressure they're forcing on it, even though it's not aligned. They could end up damaging the back of the board. So they do put some mitigation stuff in here like these screws in fact actually now that i look at this the the motherboard does come with an extra screw in the box for the it's this size so that's probably uh, what that's for so that's gonna be an overview of the msi mag x870 tomahawk this is probably one of the most impressive x870 boards that i've looked at i'll probably be doing a live stream build with this motherboard in the near future so stay tuned for that if you're new to the channel and you like this sort of content do leave a like do get subscribed so you get notified when i go live on youtube and i will see you guys next time thanks